Hi, welcome to One Word a Day. I'm Sophia, pilot into the universe of Chinese. We are going to continue our journey in discovering one new Chinese expression today. Yesterday, we talked about which is Chinese translation of energy efficiency or conservation and environment protection. Okay, today we continue with 能 in 能者多劳. So if 能 in yesterday is talking about the energy of things, non-human things, and today we are talking about the 能 in particularly human, we pair, because we pair it with 者, 者 is kind of a person, generic person, a more like complicated than this human figure to like standing human, right? This 者 is more like a, I translate as a pro, like somebody who spent quite some time in doing something, therefore they are good at something. So 能者 means this group of people who are capable. Um, okay, so 能, we talked about last time that uh, it means energy, it means muscle power or skill. Um, so yesterday when we talked about energy, then that means, um, I mean, it means, <laughs> it means energy, but today, the skill means who are able to do something. Not only have the time, the energy to do it, but they have the know-how to do it. So this is more um, in today's context. Okay, the character made up of this net looking thing. So basically it's um, a border or frame of the net with two of the crosses to show you the pattern of the net. And the net symbol next to four separated icons or something. So I haven't figured out the whole story of that yet, but according to some scholar, we can view this as a beast of like the four legs of the beast. And then this is the muscle power and this is the weird shape of the head of the beast. But it's a little bit, you know, it's, it's a hypothesis. It's, it's hard to, um, it's hard to imagine because, because we have this netting structure out there. So obviously people think, okay, so this is some beast we try to capture or contain within this nest. So this looks like um, some beast, um, but it could be some other things that total there, this nesting. Nesting probably just means you have something contained, kind of like a nuclear power, it's super powerful. It's a lot of energy, but you, you put a safe net over there to keep it contained, right? So this energy <laughs> part, um, besides the netting, so this is the part that could be like explosive um, to the good or the bad of things. Um, so that part I haven't figured out yet because I know this icon means change. This icon means meat or muscle power. And this means a spoon or I guess a source of nutrition. And then this part is something it's hard to tell because that means the this looks like the flip of the sign of a knife. So all of these symbols each have their own coming from their own origins and want to piece together why they're assembled together. And over the over the years, it becomes this um, ability or energy like means that. Like it's it's really hard to tell. Okay, I'll just leave it there, open for interpretation. Maybe one day I come up with a better theory. Okay, true. Uh, I translate as a pro. Uh, simply, it means uh, a type of person that went through time of training or spending um, time on something. So that's why I translate as a pro. Of course, the pro in ancient times is different from our contemporary. The contemporary will have this certification or education, you got a degree or something to kind of to, to show, to, acknowledge, to authorize you, almost like you, you're, you have the publicly uh, validated uh, ability to do something, specialize in something, and that's true. Um, but in ancient times, probably this professional is done the way to define who is professional. It's, it's different because ancient time is more apprentice system, right? So how, how, how are you going to know if it's somebody is becomes a professional in there. Um, it's a different measurement uh, system. So, oh, okay, over here, it looks symmetrical, almost symmetrical, right? Because this sign and this sign, the left and right looks kind of a reverse, kind of entangled in this way. It, visually, is it, it's pleasing. And then we have the center here. That means uh, white color. Um, 
the reason why is white because over here this kind of uh, cup shape thing with the cover on it with a one horizontal line in the middle is kind of, is uh, hmm it's something related to the mouse right because up to the corner means the mouse um and then with something holding in the middle that means a sweet but we can also view it as the sun symbol with um one beam goes out okay hey this is a character that is also a mystery uh over the years like somebody created this icon and in later days, in contemporary la language, it means a professional. But how a came into being to be become a, a professional just from the icon looks over here, it's really hard to tell. Um, I don't have a, again, a cohesive, cohesive story to tell. Um, yeah. Okay, I'll just leave it like that. Um, this is more like a container word because this word means a trained person, um, but it didn't say trained in what trade or specialty. So this, a trained person, can be paired with other things to group the meaning of um, a specialty or special category. So nongzhu means capable people. Uh, and uh, again, there is no capable in what particular domain. There's no specification there. Just saying nongzhu means you're, you're able, you're, you, you can do something. Okay, duo lao, duo uh, means more. And we have double size of this symbol. This symbol means um, evening because it's kind of a half covered crescent shape of the moon. So we use the moon to signify it as evening and the double the evening means a uh, multitude of something and eventually this doubling. Um, this evening got weakened. We don't really think about in terms of evening anymore, but we're think thinking about the doubling. So that means multiplying, uh, that means more. So eventually that becomes the symbol of more. Uh, you're gonna see this word a lot because more is a concept of um, frequently used when we compare things, right? So th this is the original more. Lao, we have um, the arch. You see, we have arch here. That's for a net. But here is the arch um, paired with two fires on the top. So the fires are the cone shape with sparkles on the side. That's visual depiction of the fires. And the multitude of fires means that there are a lot of lights around. Uh, it, may not necessarily mean something is on fire, especially when we have this arch thing. I'm showing you a, a similar one, but it paired with a different icon in the middle. But they share a similar structure of this arch with two fires on the top. So the arch here means a space that is not a domestic space. When we mean domestic space, we add a little chimney on the top. Now, without a chimney, it means it's not it's not somebody's home, but there are fires on top of it. That means it's a well lit place. This well lit place in ancient times could be a town or a city or somewhere that's within uh within the walls. It's protected. So this this walls we can see this arch structure as such a protected. Um, city and then the lights uh, or the double fires on there simply means um, in the in the evening times kind of like a street lamp right if we want to relate to our contemporary living so street lamp so it's um lights outside um and you can it's still well lit during the evenings because probably in ancient times we uh, one we don't have electricity and two there's no need to light up on the street, uh, the evening is the time you stay at home. You're not even supposed to go outside. So if a place do have an evening light up, um, that means it's it's a city. It has you know nightlife probably to a degree. And um, so now we have the muscle power here is um, 
the plow sign or the raking sign is a farming too. And people use it a farming too to mean it's it's related to heavy labor, right? So we use that farming too to symbolize power. Um, we have power sign versus here. This is a two circles connected with with one vertical line. Well, in that uh, in this phrase uh, or this character, it means um, fortress, and in this character, it translated as labor. But they share this structure together. It means kind of like a city, right? City. And when it means fortress, it means, okay, these two, you can view it as two uh, individuals connected. So it's a organized group of people. So organized group of people, you can view it as um, almost like a military, right? People are numbered, people are um, teamed into uh, different units of, of movement. Uh, armed forces, right? So these, you can view it as armed forces stationed within this fortress and have night lighting at night. But here, when we have a muscle power, um, that means working, still laboring overnight when it's light up within this, um, supposedly the city, uh, or the town back then. So if you have to work at night, that's some real uh, labor because normally laboring in the day, right? Um, and if you have to work at night, that means uh, it's a debt, um, it's a tight schedule and you have to put in extra time and hours to, to finish the job. So that we use as this intensified um, labor. Okay, so capable people, do more labor is a contemporary Chinese expression oftentimes used hmm, in a in a workplace when supposedly your boss or your coworker was saying Neng zhe duo lao, as if it's a complimentary to you because they're saying, okay, you are this capable person. And as a result of your being so capable, you should do more. So it's, it looks like a meritocracy, right? Because you're more capable, therefore you can do more. But the disconnect over there is this lao and this de, de we, in other episodes we talked about, it, it means a fair exchange of your labor. Because here, this means walking, basically walking sign used as a, uh, doing. And then the top is uh, currency or money. So you do your stuff, you get paid. And then this symbol is hand symbol with a pointer up there, means measured, means everything is disciplined. Um, like you have to come to this point, one inch down the wrist, uh, not up or not down. So that means at the right point, exactly right point. So here simply means fair trade. So you get compensated for your labor, for your work. Neng zhe duo lao simply is saying, because you, you're, you know, you are perceived or praised as somebody who's capable, therefore you should do more work, but not necessarily get paid more. You, you do more because you, you can, but the disconnect is the compensation is not in proportion to the labor you put in. And, um, I guess it, in contemporary life that people are more and more aware of this uh, this fairness of, of payment. I mean, it happened to US and China as well, right? So um, people are kind of rise against this concept of don't let me do more because I'm more capable. Um, and don't get me, uh, the implied uh, message there is don't get paid because I do more. And I do more because I'm more, I'm able to do more. Like what kind of argument is that, right? Like you do more, you're supposed to do more, um, like more than the fair share of what you get paid for, right? So that's what the more is comparing to. Like you are doing more, but you're not getting paid more. You're, you're, 
your pay rate is fixed, but you do more than what you're paid for because you're capable. Like what, what kind of argument is that? So people start to rebel against the idea. Like I don't use that on me. Like I don't want to do more. Even if I'm capable to do more, I don't want to do more unless I get paid in proportion. So here is a cartoon kind of to point out a social ph phenomenon of people who do put in more work, but they are not earned as much as this guy supposed to be, um, I know, nepotism, uh, somebody's nephews or sons. Um, they, they are in there, they don't do the work, but they get paid more because they know somebody. So this lao and the du, this labor and this payment are you know, imbalanced. So that's what's the sat satire of there, uh, of this nong zhe duo lao concept. Okay, cash into the currency of thinking by one word a day with Sophie. See you next day.